My name is Mindogas. I am a flight dispatcher at Avian Express, and today I will be telling you about basic information that is needed for flight planning and the structure of operational flight plan. So the first thing that we check is the weather conditions at the at the airport from which we will be flying. In this case, it's uh, AV, it's Vilnius uh, Airport. From this information, that is uh, basically a code, I can see that the TAF report was issued at uh, 5 UTC on no November 4th, and it's valid from today till tomorrow, basically from November 4th uh, to November 5th. From this report, I can see that the wind condition is uh, not special, it's basically calm wind, but we have a low visibility, as you can see here, it's 300 meters of visibility with patches of fog, and the vertical visibility is 200 feet. And that is going to change from 6 UTC to 9 UTC, and the cloud cover will lift up, and basically give us improved visibility conditions. And basically, that's the information that I start with. Other thing that I need to check is uh, uh, NOTAMS. It's Notice to Airmen, and it tells me about special conditions that are present at the airport. For example, it might be a uh, closed runway, a closed uh, taxiway, anything that, uh, that is related to operations and might inflict some damage to the aircraft or, for example, uh, aerodrome operating hours. So from this information that I see here, I see that there are some planned uh, times that will, uh, the runway will be repaired and the lights will go out uh, due to work in progress. And yeah, that's the start. The next thing I need to check is the weather conditions at Amsterdam, the, our destination airport. And from what I can see here, the conditions should be okay. Some clouds, but nothing special, and not uh, low visibility conditions. And from tough reports, I see that there might be some migrating geese uh, in the area. It's more of a caution to the pilots that will be reading the same information that I'm reading. And yes, uh, just uh, some procedures that uh, are in place to avoid miscommunication with the ATC. As I've told, it's basically for the pilots, but I need to double check it just to know if, uh, for example, if a runway is closed, if the other runways are suitable for our operations. And basically, I have TAF and NOTAM reports for alternate airports and all the airports that I'll, will be in route. So basically, when we know this information that we get from uh, NOTAMs and TAF reports, uh, we can start to plan and I will show you the basic flight plan from the same flight from Vilnius to Amsterdam and uh, what are the components of the, of the flight plan. So this is the first page of the flight plan, which is the most important one. And we basically have two copies of the same page. One is left at the aircraft and the other is given to ground handling. So from this we see the basic information, the flight number, the route from Vilnius to Amsterdam, and the route points that we are going to use for our route. Basically it's from Vilnius to point Nedam to point Tignu to point Latmi and so on. Other information that we see from this first page is the estimated passenger number, estimated payload that is forecasted for the flight. It might change to either side because some passengers may take more baggage, some passengers may take less baggage, and of course the passengers themselves are of different sizes. But for flight planning purposes, the estimated payload is practically remains the same, and it varies to 300 kilos in either side. The other information that we see from this flight plan is the zero fuel mass, which is the aircraft with the passengers and their cargo, but without the fuel. The other thing that we see is the takeoff mass, which is the mass at which the aircraft will be taking off. Uh, basically the fuel, the passengers, and everything else. 
and the landing mass, which is also another important number. And we need to ensure that it doesn't exceed the maximum landing weight of the aircraft. Basically, in this situation, it's quite good because we have uh, four tons of extra payload that we can take without uh, risking some structural damage to the aircraft. Basically, what it means that the captain can take some extra fuel just in case he needs it en route. Other information that is vital to the flight is fuel calculations. From here, we see the fuel needed to the destination, the reserve, which is 5%, the fuel needed to the alternate, the final reserve, which is half an hour of flying at holding altitude for half an hour. And this is the total required fuel, 7 tons and 600 kilos, which differs from the destination of 5 tons and 300 kilos, since we have to take all those reserves. And in case some something happens in route and the captain needs to change the altitude. He has some correction parameters. For example, if he needs to fly at flight level of 340, he should take uh, 5.4 tons. If he wants to fly at a flight level of 320, he can take 5.5 to be safe. Basically, that's the first page. And next, we see the fuel calculations for each point and the elapsed time. Here it's written the time from point to point, and the lower number is the total flight time. As you can see, one minute and three minutes, so uh, from this point to this point it flies seven minutes, so in total ten minutes, and so on. And that's uh, just for the pilots to double check if they are on time and if they are using enough fuel or if they are using a lot, of, a lot more fuel, that there might be a problem and they might need to divert to another airport. And basically that's three pages of these fuel calculations and then route points. And of course the route to the first alternate and also the fuel calculations. Uh, next we see the ATC flight plan, which is basically the format that we send to Eurocontrol and they always uh, they should always approve it. Basically it tells uh, our flight number, our model of the aircraft, departure time, the route, the alternate, some information that is needed for ETC. Uh, basically when we are going to cross some regions and everything else. And, of course, the coordinates for each en route point, which, which was mentioned before in the field calculations. From here we see possible altitudes uh, for each en route point. Basically, it, it isn't uh, time accurate, but it gives a good view from point to point, which we can use and what uh, is planned. For example, we reach a top of climb at before point Akuma, and we reach top of descent after point Dobak. And from this I can see that uh, the pilot can climb to flight level 380 or descend to 340, and there is no restrictions there. And in the next page we see available flight levels according to time. Basically, it almost accurately shows uh, how the aircraft takeoffs flies at altitude, uh, at what point he needs to descend, at what point he might need to level off and fly a little bit further before descending to the airport. And the last page is the wind component, which is planned for en route flights. It might change because the route might not be just straight, it might turn to some points, and basically it's given the points that will be en route. And, uh, calculated wind components. The other thing that the pilots use are significant weather charts. Uh, these charts show uh, dangerous buildups of clouds, jet streams, uh, at, at what de level they are. Uh, for example, here we can see a big uh, cumulonimbus cloud which is from the ground. XXX means from the ground to flight level 240. And for pilots, if they can, to avoid this, uh, this cumulonimbus cloud. 
here we can see that there might be some turbulence between these levels, 200 and 130, and the, some turbulence might be encountered in the same levels because of those CCB clouds. It's given for the altitude from 100 to 450. The other charts that pilots use is wind charts. It basically shows the wind directions and wind strength. From here we can see that if, for example, in this point, we see that the wind blows from the east and it's at 50 knots. A uh, triangle means 50 knots, while a longer line means uh, 10 knots, and a shorter line means 5 knots. And from this I can see that it's, uh, the wind direction is uh, approximately 0, 090, and the wind uh, strength is 50 knots. Also, we see from this number that the temperature at this level, 390, as we can see here, it will be minus 60. We just need to add a minus. And of course, they might be flying at, as our route takes us, uh, 360. And for pilots just to know what the wind conditions might be, we add the charts for levels 340 and 390, so the pilots can work out the, the median bet between those two. And basically, that's the information that is needed for basic flight planning. Mm -hmm.